It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. As there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. You ain't beefing me. Besides, once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. Ah, a single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. Reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. With all that gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he's shooting at. You can't all it takes is one tiny spark, and boom. Take that asshole out! You're done. One wrong bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted too. I freely admit that my plan of attack was not just more honest, but clearly in sight. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder. A way into the mine from the opposite side. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. I needed to make a leap of faith. Which ain't easy when you're suspended between heaven and hell. Determined not to give up. As Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the sheriff was up to, people were outraged. The ten thousand they put on his head would go a long way to helping me find old Carl. And I had made it my mission to settle that score come hell or high water. But first, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator, or climb the ladder. 
I picked the more convenient and more dangerous route. was a mad dog killer, and the people of Nevada City deserved it. Nevada City? Well, I thought Plummer met his maker in Bannock, Montana. Right, well, well he was a sheriff of both places at one time or another, but that's neither here nor there. The point was, taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. Plummer was clearly unhinged, and I could see right away that this was going to take some good. Yeah. <laughs> 
So that's how Henry Plummer died. Him and his crew were worth their weight in gold. And now, I was officially a bounty hunter. So, did you finally go after that Bob feller? Well, I heard word he was in Kansas with John Wesley Hardin. So that's where I went. Where in Kansas? Abilene. Why do you ask, Ben? No reason. Was Hardin as fast as Ringo? Ringo was fast, but John Wesley was as fast as the devil himself. Hell, he killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody, not even Wild Bill Hickok himself. I dodged death many a time. And that night in Abilene was no good. I was there with the intention of finding that bastard Bob and collecting the bounty on John Wesley. I thought the Texas Rangers got heart. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they want you to believe. Uh! It was cold in a witch's tit and a brass bra that night as I fought my way past his loyal compadres. very same saloon we're sitting in today. Look around and imagine this place painted in blood. Harden was waiting for me. And I'm jumping the gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this some bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, Ben? John Wesley Hardin was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. Fathers and husbands, brothers and sons, men with families who cared about them. He was a bona fide folk hero by then and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town, and I was hoping Bob was among them. God damn it! Shoot that son of a bitch! I had to spill a lot of blood to find out Hardin wasn't in that camp. He was carousing in town with his closest friends. Hardin's boys apparently didn't want me to reach the bull's head. 
Some were hightailing it into town to inform their jefe of my unwelcomed presence. Wondered if Bob was among them. And I steeled myself for the fight ahead. For as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Before I could test my mettle against Harden, however, I would first need to dispatch his cadre of hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption, but John Wesley might have been a different story. I didn't learn until later that that night was in fact his birthday celebration. I think I already mentioned that I found Hardin in this very saloon. Suffice it to say, nobody there was happy to see me. felt a certain hostility.
I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. I felt a bolt of adrenaline, or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. Oh! No, wait! He didn't hit me then! I'm sure of it! That man was faster than Grease Lightning, but being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless Avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon, just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, do you ever go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. A bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high, they tickled the nether regions of heaven. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony, and the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution and were more than willing to die for him. They saw me before I saw them. Crossed my mind that maybe this wasn't such a good idea, but now that the shooting had started, there was no backing down.
rugged country. The winter home of the Cherokawas. And that's why they had retreated. <gasps> I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did. But then again, I got a lot of those. Find Grey Wolf? Not at that moment, but I did find the entrance to their hideout. 